Hi, welcome to Budget MTG Days. All magic fun, all cards on the dollar. I'm David. I'm Stefan. And today we're going to be looking at all the white cards in Ether Revolt. Yeah, we're going to evaluate all the cards for limited, so draft and sealed. And for your pre-release, you will get four packs of Ether Revolt and two packs of Kaladesh. So if you haven't watched the Kaladesh videos yet, you should do that. Exactly. There will be a link right on your screen right now, so you can just go ahead and click that. So how are we going to evaluate these cards? We're going to use a three-tier system. Now, if we say a card is tier one, it means it pushes you into that color. It means it's a limited bomb. It's a card that's going to be winning you the game, and you're probably going to want to play this color if you draw a card that has tier one. Tier two cards are also very, very good. If you've got a number of tier two cards in a color, you're going to be pushed into that color. And if you're already in a color, then a tier two card of that color is basically an auto-include. Finally, we've got tier three. Those are your filler cards. Those are cards, let's say you're, you're missing a two drop, missing a three drop. Then look to your tier three cards to smooth out your mana curve. And finally, we've got the put aside cards, which basically, as we say, just put them aside. Don't look at them. Sure, there are situations where they could be useful, but most of the time they're not going to be pulling their weight in limited. So also it's very important to remember is that sometimes you may draw a masterpiece because just as Kaladesh, this yeah. set also has masterpiece inventions. Uh, what's so great about these uh, inventions? Well, the really rare, that's first, and there are some n not standard legal reprints and some um, prints from the set, but if you open them in limited, you can just play them. Exactly. So for example, here's an example of one of the new inventions and it's awesome and you want it. Uh, exactly. The, the chances of getting one are so small, but it's just nice to mention that they are in there. So let us get right started with the common cards. Our first card is Implement of Improvement. For one generic mana, we get an artifact, and it states as an ability that if you pay a white mana, we can sacrifice it, and then we gain two life. Also, when it goes from the, from the battlefield onto the graveyard, we get to draw a card. Now, this may not seem like a white card, but because it's exclusively only useful in a, car, in a deck that has white, we're gonna put those kind of cards over here. So, uh, Stefan, what do you think about this? It's not enough. For two mana, you, it replaces itself, but you get two life and you're using a card. So I think the card slot is better used somewhere else. Exactly. So just put that card aside. So the next one, Alley Evasion. It's one white, an instant, and you can choose one of either. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus two until end of turn, or return target creature you control to its owner's hand. So this is nice because instant speed you can save something and it's a combat trick plus one plus two. It isn't that great. It's a tier three for me, but you will see later that will um, trigger something interesting because some mechanic will use this. Revolt, that's yeah. a spoiler. Yeah. All right, anyway, uh, I, I agree. I kind of like it. Normally these kind of effects I think are not enough, but because it gives you the two types of things you can do, you can protect a creature or you can have it into a combat trick, have it be a combat trick and kill something of your opponent, they use just enough versatility to put it into tier three. Yeah, and I and the revolt, and trigger revolt is also pretty nice. Yeah, exactly. Uh, next card is Aegis Automaton. For two mana, we get a 0-3 construct, and for five mana, which one white, we get to return another target creature you control to its owner's hand. Now, a 0-3 is never going to be doing anything, because people can still attack into it, even with 1-1s, one and, you know, they're not worried about losing their creatures. And five mana to only return something of your own to protect it, I think is a bit too steep. Uh, I'm, I would put it aside as well, this card. Yeah, five mana and bounce your own creatures, like really? If it was someone else's creature, then okay, but yeah. this is just not, it's just too too expensive for exactly. too little. Yeah. So next one, Conviction. One and a white enchantment aura, enchant creature. An enchantment cre enchanted creature gets plus one, plus three, and for one white, return, to return Conviction to its owner's hand. So you can Play it on a creature and then you can get it back for one mana. So it's not that if you get two for one, you can also save this aura. So you won't get two for one. Yeah. And as we said, something bouncing back will trigger a revolt, and that's also pretty important. And that's why it's for me a tier three, because you can not two for one yourself 
and you can trigger a mechanic that's actually pretty nice. Yeah, think about it. Scenario, uh, turn two, you play your two drops. It's a two, two for two. Then turn three, you play this on top of it. Now it's a three, five. You can attack with a three, five on turn three. Yeah. And you still have that one mana open to return it back to your hand should your opponent have some kind of tri tricky, uh, sneaky stuff that they want to do to kill your three, five, which is probably very difficult to do at that early stage of the game. But even if you do, you can still return it on turn three back to your hand and not be two for one. I think that's actually pretty decent. Exactly. Next card is Countless Gears Renegade for two mana. It's a two two dwarf artificer. And this guy's got revolt. So this is that mechanic that we've yeah. been talking about. Uh, revolt is basically like uh, like morbid that we've seen before in the past, but a little bit different. It states that uh, when this guy enters the battlefield, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn. Then we get to create a 1-1 one, one colorless servo artifact creature token. So uh, I think this is tier 3. Why? Because already a 2-2 two, two for 2, that's fine. That's on yeah. curve. That If it was just be a bear, that would be absolutely fine. Plus, later in the game, when you're losing stuff or maybe triggering your conviction, for example, then it's giving you a little extra guy. And uh, 3 power and toughness over 2 bodies for 2 mana is, uh, is pretty decent. But not enough for me to say auto-include. No, exactly. It's just a good filler. And it's just with Morbid, it was um, creature dies, and this does everything, it bounces back to your hand because it leaves the battlefield. And that's why Conviction is also really nice because you can just return it for one mana and then it triggers default. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. So the next one, Audius Infiltrator. One on the right, it's a 3 1 Dwarf Rogue, and Audacious Infiltrator cannot be blocked by artifact creatures. I think it's audacious. Audacious. Audacious, as in he's very spectacular. He's fantastic, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, it's a 3-1 for 2. It isn't spectacular, but for it's a three, uh, tier 3. Yeah, he's a, he's a brave guy. Uh, I like uh, my 3-1s for 2 more than Stefan does. Yeah. Uh, I think they deal a lot of damage. I think they trade very well. I think they block very well. And uh, this guy is not going to be blocked by uh, those 1-1 one, one servos, 1-1 one, one, one thopters. So I think that actually pushes it a little bit better. I think it's actually a pretty good filler. I, I, I th I'm actually quite happy with this as a filler. Yeah, because it cannot be blocked by servos yeah. makes it a little better. But exactly. I'm not... I'm not still not happy. No, it doesn't happy. go to no, it doesn't go to tier two. I'm I'm happy with it, but it's still not tier two. All right, next one, a Bastion Enforcer for three mana. We get a three two dwarf soldier. That's it. He's vanilla, but you know what? You're not unhappy putting this in your deck. And I think that's something that's uh, that you'll notice with all the cards in the set. There's a lot of just good filler cards that are just fine in any deck that uh, that has that color. And this is a perfect example. I mean, for three mana, three two. It's not bad. I mean, I mean, is it auto-include? No, no, absolutely not. But it's very decent. Nobody's upset to see it. Yeah. Except I'm, your opponent, maybe. <laughs> I'm happier with this one, even if it's more expensive. But the one toughness, I think it's really relevant. Okay. So, next one, Decommission. At two and a right, it's an instant. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. It has three fold. And if you permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, you also gain three life. So, the revolt isn't that important. Three life. Sure, if you can have it, but you shouldn't wait for it. No. It just, it's removal. A lot of artifacts here, a couple good enchantments. So a tier three, because you won't always have a thing to remove. Plus, not all the bombs are artifacts. That's true. But remember, yeah. we're also going to be having two packs of Kaladesh in our yeah. pre-release. So that, and there's a lot of vehicles there. There's some vehicles here. Uh, I think it'll, you'll probably have a target. And it's also instant speed. Exactly. Nice. So yeah. that's why it's a really good tier 3. Exactly. If you search, search for removal, this is also removal. Yeah. Remember that. Yeah. Next, we have Caught in the Brights for three mana. It's an enchantment aura. So this is basically the proverbial uh, deer caught in headlights about to get crushed. So how does this creature get crushed? It says enchanted creature can't tackle block, so it's pacifism, very good. And then when a vehicle you control attacks, exile enchanted creature. Okay, well, if it happens, sure, but mostly if you've been able to uh, enchant a creature with this of your opponent, they're not doing anything relevant most of the time anymore, because exactly. essentially their, their bomb stuff are gonna be using to attack and to block. Yeah. So you've taken it out, and this is something you're gonna always wanna put in if you're in white, and if I got a couple of these, then I'm looking at white because uh, it's that good. Tier two. Yeah. So if you start up your vehicle, you will just run over your opponent's creature. Ah, that is so nice. <laughs> so, Hirapa... Hirapur? Hirapur. 
Gürpe Osprey. Maybe it's not correct. I'm just saying it with confidence as if I know how to say it. But that's the key. You know, you know we've mispronounced probably every single word so far, but just say it with gusto and then yeah. that's better. Gürpe Osprey. There you go. Two and a white. It's a tutu bird with flying. So, yeah, it's a tutu flyer for two mana. It's just good put tier two because you want to play it. I could talk about this all day because I love these kind of cards, these wind drakes so much. They win me the game. When I win the game, these are the cards that are winning me the game. Uh, two, two, two in the air is a lot for yeah. just three. It is really, really a lot. And if it comes in early, it's strong. And late game is also strong. I, I just don't see a situation where you wouldn't want to play this if you're already in white. Exactly. Uh, Ether Inspector is next for four mana. We get a two, three Dwarf Artificer, so the body's okay. You know, it's good. It's good. It can block bears. That's yeah. fine. Uh, it's got Vigilance, so you can attack and block with it. That's pretty decent. And when this guy enters the battlefield, you get two energy. All right, pile it on. You're getting mm -hmm. even more stuff. And finally, when this guy attacks, you may pay that two energy. And if you do, you create a one, one colorless servo artifact creature token. This seems all pretty, pretty good. And you would think, hey, because of all this extra stuff, it would be pushed to tier two. But I still think it's actually just tier three. Just a decent feeling because remember, you're still paying four mana for this. And there's a lot of bigger stuff that you could be playing for four mana. The energy could be useful. I think it's, I think it seems if all the if all the stars align, it's doing a lot for you. I just think there's a lot of situations as well where it's just going to be a two three with vigilance, and you've yeah. just got nothing else you can do with it. It's a two three with vigilance and a one one body, but the one one would be better on the creature itself. So that's why I don't think it's a tier two. And just you have to be able to attack to be able to get that one one. So maybe exactly. you lose this guy just to get your one one, and you lost your energy. Exactly. So there's a lot of situations where it's not fantastic, but still filler. Yeah. Right? So next one, Don't Feather Eagle. It's a four mana and one white. It's a 3-3 bird with flying. And when Don't Feather Eagle enters the battlefield, creatures you control get plus one plus one and gain vigilance until end of turn. This one is really nice because it's a 3-3 in the air. Five mana, okay, but it pumps up your team and it gives you vigilance. So that's really nice. It's a really good surprise. And then after that, you have a 2-3 in the air. Exactly, and that, that could be winning games uh, by itself as well. So, exactly, so tier 2. Yeah, very, very strong. Yeah. All right, those are the common cards. So uh, let's have a look at the uncommon cards. So the first uncommon is Restoration Specialist. One on the white, it's a 2-1 Dwarf Artificer. And for one white, you can sacrifice Restoration Art Specialist. And we turn up to one target artifact card and up to one target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Well, you probably won't have an artifact and enchantment in the graveyard, you'll probably have an artifact in the graveyard later in the game. So it's a decent body for two mana, plus it can get you something back late game. So I think it's a good filler. Yeah, I think it's a bad filler. Uh, I would put it tier three. I do like the fact that you could use it early on as a as a two one, you know, so you can still yeah. trade with a bear. And late game, you can just use it essentially as a three mana. I'm gonna return my 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 good artifact back to my hand. Uh, so in that sense, I do still see it as a filler, but I wouldn't be too excited about it. But it has its functions. Exactly. It just depends on the artifacts you get, and that's the whole yeah. point of. If these you would things. have, let's say, if you would have no artifacts, only have those artifacts that are just you know inconsequential. Uh, then, then I probably wouldn't even include it because I think there's better uh, two twos for yeah. Time. But if you have like a bomb or something like that, sure. Then, yeah. then it's just nice to able to get it back. Yeah, good insurance, absolutely. Next yeah. card is Thopter Arrest for three mana, which one white we get an enchantment and states that when this thing enters the battlefield, exile target artifact or creature an opponent controls until Thopter Arrest leaves the battlefield. So it's basically like a more limited Oblivion Ring. Uh, but we all know that that is very, very strong. Also, because people don't have a lot of ways to destroy enchantments in Limited, uh, because, well, there's just not that many good targets for it. So basically, it's unconditional removal for their best creature or their best artifact, and that pushes it into Tier 2 for me. Yeah, exactly. Just exiles uh, bomb, so what more do you really want? If you do, you're greedy. You know <laughs> Dead Eye Harpooner. Two and a white, a 2-2 two, two Dwarf Warrior with Revolt, and when Harpooner enters the battlefield, if a permanent would, um, you controlled left the battlefield this turn, destroy target, tapped creature and opponent controls. So I really like this one, but because it's a 2-2 for 3 mana, 
but it can also destroy something. The problem is refold. You won't always able to trigger refold when yeah. you want to. Yeah. And that's why it's a tier 3 for me. Yeah, if it would be uh, maybe a little bit easier to or more reliable to be able to yeah. get rid of your uh, opponent's stuff, then of course for three mana two two that would be amazing. Uh, but this is just, it's, yeah, it's quite revolt is quite situational. You have to yeah. really build around it. Exactly. Um, but uh, you can still put it in as a filler. Yeah, I, feel I bad mean, about that. I mean, it's not the greatest body, but yeah. if you get a refold, you can destroy a tapped creature. So yeah. the upside is really good, and the downside is. Not too much. No, I so mean, think just... about it. Let's say it's turn three, you got nothing else. You can still just turn three, play it as a 2-2. Two, two, yeah. Right? And start hitting face if you want to. So that's why I'm not really too sad if I would play this. Correct, correct. Absolutely. Next card is Death Dismissal for four mana. It is an instant and it deals three damage divided as you choose it amongst one, two, or three target attacking or blocking creatures. We've seen this effect a lot of times. This kind yeah. of effect comes back a lot in white, but it is just very, very good. I like it because it can either kill something that's three toughness, or it can kill those three 1-1 uh, uh, servos or thopters coming at you. So it gives you a lot of versatility, especially if you're killing all those servos or maybe the, uh, the, the two ones that we saw before that are attacking. Sure, they have to attack or block, but people are attacking and blocking in limited so you will be able to use this four mana it may seem a bit high i think for the amount of stuff you'll be able to kill with it or the size of the stuff you'll be able to kill i think it's a pretty good deal not auto include because there's just better removal uh, at this price but still a uh, filler card yeah if you need removal it's removal absolutely yeah so next one feather the guardian three and a white it's a one four cat beast and when he enters the battlefield you may exile another target permanent you control then return that card under the battlefield uh, under your control, so it flickers something. Yeah. So a one four for four isn't that great. I mean, it can block, but that's all it does. Yeah, it doesn't and have flash, so you can't use it to block something else. Then flicker that back to protect it. Exactly. If it had flash, then it would be a different story. Yeah. But it doesn't have flash, and it will flicker something. So it gives something pseudo vigilance for one turn. If you have fun at the battlefield, um, six okay. Yeah. But there's not that much. Exactly. Not, I haven't seen that many crazy enter the battlefield abilities I'd like to build around. No. Limited. You can destroy a tough creature. That you can because it it removes itself and then it comes back. So it does trigger refold on its own. Yeah, that's true. So you could destroy a tough creature if you had both of them. Yeah. But, but normally just for the side. Exactly, too unreliable. Next card is Aeronaut Admiral for four mana. It is a three one human pilot with flying and vehicles you control have flying. Okay, this seems like a very cool constructed card. In limited, you can assume you won't have this and the, 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 the vehicle, the right vehicle. So let's just see it as a 3-1 with flyer for four. I think it does do a lot of damage. Uh, sure, if they have that 1-1 one, one Thopter, they will be able to kill it, but I don't think the chance is that big. A little overcosted, but it will deal damage. I think tier three, uh, okay filler card. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, you're ha more happy with it than I am. Naturally, yes. Yeah. yeah. It is a filler. Would you put it in? I would probably put it in. Okay, then, then we're still in agreement. <laughs> our modification. Four and a white is our enchanted creature or vehicle. As long as enchanted uh, permanent is our vehicle, it's its creature in addition to its other types. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has flying. So if you have a vehicle, it all, it's always a creature now, and it gets plus two, plus two, and flying. So. That's actually really cool, but you have the vehicle, and one of the good parts about vehicles is that they get um, they go around sorcery speed removal, and now it's suddenly a creature you can kill by sorcery speed removal. Yeah. So I just put it aside because you're just waiting to get two for one. Yeah, and even then, I think five mana is still pretty steep. It is. Yeah. For getting two for one, so uh, seems seems fun if it yeah. works. Exactly. Most of the time it won't, and then you're just sad. And the last of the uncommons, we have Aerodrop Aeronauts for three and two white. So for five mana, we get a four, three Flying Dwarf Scout. You sold me already. That's it, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy right there off the bat. Also, it has Revolt. So when a permanent enter the battlefield this turn of yours, uh, then we also get five life. Nice little bonus. Five life is actually pretty decent. Yeah. It's actually pretty decent for, for just being an extra bonus. I wouldn't do anything special to get it. But should it be that you already had combat and you did lose uh, something or maybe you sacrificed something and then you play this guy and you get the five life plus a four three flyer, 
that is going to be winning games. I think 4-3 in the air is tough to block. You know, mm -hmm. you got your your wind drake type creatures. Your two two flyers can't stop it. Your your ornithopters can't stop it. Well, definitely ornithopters can't stop it. Your your normal one one thopters uh, tokens can't stop it, and uh, it'll trade with pretty much anything because it's got four power. Exactly. So it's just really nice because four power in the air is really relevant. Yeah. So if you're playing white, included. That's tier two. All right. Those are the uncommons. Let's have a look at the rares. The first of our white rares is Ether Geode Miner. For one and a white, so for two mana, we get a 3 1 dwarf scout. So I'm already happy with that. I mean, yeah. as a filler, that's okay, in my opinion at least. And whenever it attacks, you also get two energy. Cool. What can we do with that energy? We can actually pay two energy and then exile this guy and then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So now I really like it. Why? Because we can attack with it, it generates the energy. Should they not block or anything like that, fine, you're dealing damage, you get three energy, you can use for something else. Should they block it in a way that you think, hmm, I don't really want to trade in that manner, you just pay the energy and then return it back to the battlefield under our control. Uh, pristine without a single hair on its head damaged. That is pretty reliable uh, damage and energy that you'll be getting. Exactly. It's just really nice because it gives you energy and it can protect itself with the thing it provides. Yeah. So that's really nice, just tier 2. Tier 2, absolutely, just include it. Yeah. So next one, Shram, Senior Edificer. It's one on white, it's a 2-2 dwarf advisor, and whenever you cast an aura, equipment or vehicle spell, draw a card. So it's pretty specific, it's a vehicle, it's aura or equipment, and we don't have that many that you want to play, and vehicles, of course you want to play vehicles, because vehicles are pretty cool, but you have auras and you have equipments, and you're probably not going to play those. No. And I don't think it's enough to actually say, oh, that's really good. Because drawing cards is really good. Yeah, but you won't be able to. Exactly. So then it's not that good. <laughs> exactly. So it's still a 2-2-4-2 two, two, two with upside, potentially. Yeah. yeah. So it's a filler. Yeah. I mean, think about it. If it would say creature or uh, artifact, then it would be insane. Then it now it's insane. just sane. <laughs> what well, makes sense seems like a like, like a smart guy uh, so it's uh, yeah just just include it because for the chance that it does coincide with when you play your vehicle then it's nice and otherwise two two for two yeah what are you gonna do right exactly next card is peace walker colossus for three generic we get a six six vehicle there we go now we're starting to look at these vehicles yeah. uh, this guy's got crew four which is quite high and it also has an ability for a generic and a white. Another target vehicle you control becomes an artifact creature until the end of turn. So in, once again, I think in Constructed, we are playing all the vehicles, this thing's activating that thing, and then you're attacking with that, and then this thing you're crewing with the other vehicle, you're crewing this one, and this one's a 6-6, six, six, and then you're attacking with that one. Awesome. Limited, that's not gonna happen. Very unlikely. I think uh, that th this thing's gonna be sitting on the battlefield doing absolutely nothing for you for most of the game late game if you've already got your crew four you know you're probably going to be attacking with that or you want to be blocking with that and just being able to uh, crew this thing is not going to be winning you uh, any games I, I would probably just put it aside yeah because it's a nice uh, ability but it will probably not do anything and that's the point exactly so next one solemn we could it's one and two white it's a two two dwarf warrior with double strike and we fold at the beginning of your end step if opponent you control left the battlefield this turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on certain recruit. So every single turn, if someone if something dies or get bounced back, it grows. Yeah. And with double strike for 3 mana, that is really good. So I want to put it in tier 2 because it will just get bigger, bigger and bigger. Yeah, it, remember, it's important to remember that it's only at the end of your uh, end step, yeah. so not every turn it doesn't get bigger, but every one of your turns, it has the potential to get bigger. Exactly. But even if you only have it happen once because you played around it, then you still get a 3-3 three, three double strike for three mana, which is sick, because that can do six damage and people are gonna have to block. It's gonna be hard to block as well. Exactly. So definitely, definitely uh, included if you're a white. And if I got a couple of these kind of cards, then I'm, I don't want to be playing this. Yeah. I want to be playing in white, definitely. Exactly. Uh, Shram's expertise is next for two and two white. For So for four mana, we get a sorcery. And these are the uh, expertise uh, cycles. So for white now, it says create three one one colorless servo artifact creature tokens. Okay, cool. So for four mana, we get three one ones. That's pretty decent. 
And we also get to cast a card with converting mana cost three from our hand without paying its mana cost. So we get a another card of, of three, two, or one from our hand for free. Uh, or a land. That's also possible. Oh no, cast a card. No, sorry, cast. don't cast. Sorry. Yeah. So three, two, or one, we get to play that also for free. That is actually insane. Unfortunately, this card by itself won't be winning you the game. It's not not like if you see this card also. Oh, I have to be. You know, this is gonna. This is the ultimate card. So we can't really put it in tier one. But it's 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 so good. It's definitely a high tier two in my yeah. opinion. Because most of the time you will play this card, you get three surfos, and then you're playing another card for free. So yeah. you're paying like two mana to get three surfos or one mana. So I don't think that's a bad. <sighs> So that's good. not a bad deal it's at all. It's gonna be so strong. Think yeah. about it, you play this, and then even if it's just a 2-2 two, two vanilla, you got three 1-1s one, and a 2-2 two, two for just this card. Sure, you have to give up the card in your yeah, hand, but exactly. that is such a, such a, a turnaround of the, of the board state. Yeah. Right? Just because you, um, play, you play a lot of mana things with just four mana. Play like, a lot of mana things with four like mana. Like a lot of mana. Mean? Like a lot of mana costed things because this will normally is cost three mana yeah. on its own and then you play something else for the price of four mana instead of sure. six yes. mana or yes. five mana. So you can save it. You can yeah, save exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. What's the next one? So call of unity. Call for unity. Three and two um, white. It's enchantment with revolt. At the beginning of your end step, if a point you control left the battlefield this turn, put a unity counter on call of unity. And then creature you control get plus one plus one for each unity counter or call of unity. So it pumps up your creatures, but you have to get revolt. And it's five mana, so it's pretty late. And then you have to um, get revolt every single turn to do stuff or to pump it up. Yeah. So I think it's a little too late. Yeah. And I think also, even if you played it the best way possible, then still on turn five, uh, on turn five, you're paying five mana for something which pumps your creatures plus one plus one, and you have no guarantee that it'll be able to go uh, up higher later. Yeah, it only pumps your creatures after this turn. So you play yeah. it on turn five, True. Right. and yeah. end of turn, you're not even attacking yeah. with a boost. End True. of turn, you're boosting your your creatures up, and then for five mana, you got everything plus one plus one. Yeah. Exactly. All right, so then we go to the last one, and that is Consulate Crackdown for three and two white. So for five mana, it's an enchantment. This one's much better. When this guy enters the battlefield, exile all artifacts your opponents control until this thing leaves the battlefield. So this is going to be wiping your opponent's side of artifacts, not your side, which is going to be a massive blow. Even if it just hits their one bomb or maybe two smaller artifacts for five mana, I think that is great. Because once again, we saw that with kind of these Oblivion Ring type effects, it's hard to get rid of. Exactly. So they're probably not going to get their stuff back. And if they had a lot of uh, artifact tokens, those things are gone anyway. So very sick. I would always play it if I'm, uh, if I'm in white. Yeah, because like we said, there will be some really cool artifacts in there. Yeah. So yeah. Just play it. Just play it. Awesome. All right, those are the rares. Let's have a look at the mythics. There's only one white mythic, and that is Exquisite Archangel for five and two white. So for seven mana, we get a five, five flying angel. Also, should we lose the game, instead we exile this card, and then our life total becomes our starting life total again. Isn't that great? Yeah. So basically, we play this. And then we can swing in with a 5 5 flyer until our opponent is dead. Should they kill us first through some kind of miracle? We're just gonna exile this card and then we say, ah, oh, let's let's start the game again for me, uh, but not, not for you. Yeah, it's. I don't even know what to say. If you find this, you're probably just winning. Exactly. Get to 7 mana, play this card, and just win. Yeah, exactly. Uh, of course, they, if they do have removal, that's the only thing they can really do about <laughs> it. But other than that, they can't really that do anything. They can't really do anything else. Yeah, exactly. They can't swing at you because then you know, then you lose the game, so you get to exile this thing. So they put them in a very awkward situation. This thing will win you the game easily. Easily. Yeah. Well, they have to attack you because then you get rid of it. Yes, but if they're not attacking you, then you're attacking them, and then they're dying. Yeah. That's true. All right, awesome. Tier one, just play it. Those are the mythics. Let's have a look at the conclusion. 
So in conclusion, white I think is okay. I haven't seen anything that really pushes me into white amazingly. There's a lot of good filler cards, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's some good tier two cards that if you got a bunch of them, sure, you know, you got some of those good flyers and you got some of that good uh, enchantment based removal stuff that it's good support. But there's nothing that really uh, makes you think, oh my God, I want to build with white so badly. Uh, so I see it more as a support color. What do you think? Yeah, but as we will see, a lot of um, cards in this set was just decent, good cards. And it will be in every color like we looked at already. So it's just with everything, it's just solid color. Yeah, yeah, it's solid. I think yeah. that's something that we have to remember. We say it like, oh, it's decent, as if it's bad. But actually, when you look at if you compare it, for example, with Kaladesh or even the sets before that, I think the the average level or the average strength of all these cards is actually really, really high, and you don't really feel bad about playing almost any of these cards, which exactly. makes it also very difficult to evaluate. Yeah. Because you say, okay, well, this is a three drop, this is a three drop, and they're both good fillers. So you know, well, pick one, right? Exactly. So that's tough. Yeah, but I. Really, I do like white though because it has the flyers, it has removal, so that's nice. So it can, that's why I'm saying it's good uh, filler because it, it allows you to fill up any spots that your yeah. main color maybe can't uh, can't fill up. Exactly. I think I don't know if that's articulate enough. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I know what you mean. Good, good. As long as you know what I mean, then there we're good. Nobody else needs to understand. All right, perfect. Anyway, okay, so now we're going to go off with uh, with the next colors. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe uh, so you can watch our reviews. You'll get a notification when our uh, reviews come in, give you the edge during your uh, set release. Also, join us on Facebook and Twitter. We can discuss these cards and tell us what you think. We can tell you what we think. And uh, I guess that's it. So let's go on to the next video. I'm David. And I'm Stefan. And this was Budget MTG Decks.